Isolating the DC side of solar PV installations is crucial for ensuring safe operation and maintenance. Getting this aspect right is especially important as DC isolators are frequently identified as the weak link in the system, leading to potentially catastrophic consequences if they malfunction. Now, regulatory guidelines regarding the use and placement of external DC isolators may differ depending on your location. In the UK, it's necessary to install an isolator if the inverter lacks a built-in one, or if you cannot verify that the built-in isolator complies with EN 60947-3. However, many installers opt to include additional isolators for added convenience. Now, we've recently explored this topic in another video, and of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts and learn about the common practices where you live, especially as I'm constantly seeking out sunny destinations to visit, so I may have to make a quick trip to see for myself. But if DC isolators are causing problems, what steps can we take to ensure a reliable installation? Is it choosing inferior products or incorrect installation procedures which are causing the problems. In reality, it's a combination of both factors. So in this video, we'll explore the important issues that you need to consider when installing a DC isolator. To navigate our journey, we'll use the new PH series isolators from Skarmy. Regular channel viewers may recognize them as Joe Robinson featured the previous generation in a video where he delved into the differences between AC and DC isolators. I'd highly recommend checking out that video after watching this one, of course. So a good place to start is to ensure you're actually installing an isolator that is rated to handle DC voltages in currents. There is a difference. Just because an isolator has a black operating handle doesn't mean it's DC rated. And as you'll see from the video we've just mentioned, there is a dramatic difference between the arc generated by a DC current compared to AC. In terms of specification, the trend for solar modules is for higher module currents as power levels increase. So getting some advice from the IET Code of Practice for grid-connected solar photovoltaic systems, second edition, the DC components such as cables, connectors, and isolators should be rated to 1.25 times the solar module short circuit current. So for the modules we have here in our test installation, the isolator must have a minimum rating of 12.4 amps. In terms of voltage, this is usually selected as 1.2 times the string open circuit voltage under test conditions. So for this array of six modules, we'd specify 302 volts. If you're working with a solar array fitted with optimizers, I'd suggest you consult the IET code of practice for more advice. These values comfortably fall within the parameters of the pH range, which provides current ratings ranging from 12 amps to 40 amps and a voltage rating of 1000 volts DC across the range. When it comes to specifying the current rating, there is an important distinction between AC isolators and solar isolators. AC isolators are typically labeled with ratings like AC21 or AC22, indicating their suitability for inductive loads. And the same principle applies to solar isolators, which use categories PV1 and PV2 ratings. PV1 is meant for single string setups where reverse currents and overcurrents are not expected. PV2, however, is applicable when current can flow in both directions, usually found in installations with parallel string connections. When reviewing the data sheet for these isolators, you will come across a table that provides information on voltage and current ratings. For instance, a 12 amp rated isolator can handle actually up to incredible 32 amps at 600 volts with a PV1 rating. However, under PV2 classification, the current capacity drops down to four amps at 1000 volts. So this is an important consideration, particularly for more complex, larger installations. So now we've explored the specification side, let's look at more practical installation aspects. These units are rated at IP66, so suitable for use in the most arduous of weather conditions. To ensure you don't compromise this rating, 
the pre-drilled mounting holes are positioned outside the gasket area. Water ingress is a significant cause of isolator failure in the field, so pay careful attention to cable entries. In our example, we've taken a slightly different approach, introducing a PV Ultra cable from our solar array through a 25 mm gland, and then splitting the conductors through two 16 mm glands to connect it out to our solar inverter. We choose these quick fix glands for two reasons. Firstly, they don't need a lock nut, so that leaves more wiring room inside, and secondly, there is a gasket seal between the gland and the enclosure body, another really important feature to maintain IP rating. Using a more conventional approach with single string cables, you can use the pre-marked drill locations on the enclosure body. Of course, IP ratings aren't just for Christmas. Long-term performance is down to the manufacturer using quality materials. Skarmy uses a high-quality UV-resistant thermoplastic with a temperature rating from minus 25 to plus 60 degrees Celsius. In terms of terminating cables, solar cables contain class five or stranded conductors. So we think they deserve special treatment. And that's not just us saying that, it's a regulation within BS7671. And we often get asked where the regulation hides in the great brown book. So turning to regulation 526, Dot nine dot one. In order to avoid inappropriate separation of individual wires of multi-wire, fine wire or very fine wire conductors, suitable terminals shall be used or the conductor ends shall be suitably treated. Hmm. Now, the IET does not provide a specific definition for suitably treated, but in our perspective, this entails the addition of a ferrule at the end of the wire. And since solar cable has double insulation, an oversized ferrule would be necessary to accommodate the double insulation. However, it would be better to use a bare ferrule without the plastic sleeve so that the copper tube matches exactly the cross-sectional area of the conductor. To facilitate wiring, the isolator mechanism can be detached from the DIN rail body for easier connection of the conductors. After reattaching it to the DIN rail, the terminal should be tightened to the specified torque setting of 1.7 newton meters for this particular version. Place the insulate cover on and you're done. The PH series solar isolators share the same external design as the SCARMA AC isolators, making them perfect for arranging switches side by side while maintaining a consistent look. Now we particularly like the recessed operating handle, not only for its aesthetics, but also for its ability to protect against accidental damage. How often do we come across missing isolator handles on those external units? The isolators can be locked in either the on position, which is helpful in areas where equipment tampering may occur, or in the off position for maintenance purposes. Now, most solar inverters can handle more than one string. So it's common to see installers fitting two isolators, one for each. However, if you want to reduce clutter, the other option is to use a dual string version instead of two single isolators, which again are part of this new pH range. Hopefully this video has provided you with the necessary insights to select the right isolator for your next solar project confidently. I've added a link to this range from SCARME in the video description. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. And if you're interested in learning more about how isolators can withstand fire, be sure to watch the video that's on screen now.